everyone and today on the bench we have some Chinese technology uh, it's a LED single color dimmer this is a this is a radio frequency dimmer rather than an IR one so this is the radio frequency key fob remote you get which has an on off button and an up down brightness button connected is a 5 meter 2 amp reel of just white LEDs um, the specification on here says 12 to 24 volts input 8 amp maximum so we've got connected to the input side bench power supply sat to pretty much 12 volts um, just over 2 amps and then the output is connected directly to the LED string so if I hit the power you can see brightly lit LEDs so can you guess what's going to happen no, that's right it doesn't work so that doesn't doesn't seem to have any effect let's try pressing both of those nope it doesn't work what a surprise eh um i thought this would be a good idea but then based on the cost i should have known better well, let's have a look inside and see if there's anything that we can fix screws in the bottom to dismantle let's see what exciting things way ahead ah interesting so this will be the actual dimmer circuitry and it looks like there's a little radio board pull this out so it's a, it's a very big case for such a small amount of, electric, of electronics uh, right so yep that is the radio board I shall have a closer look at the actual chip markings in a moment. Just get a focus on that if we can. Half the screen prints run off, so I can't really see it very well. Looks like it says RF dimmer, the SOP COMV2. That's what I think it says. Uh, LZX is that A08 on the radio board. Oh yeah, I can see this side better. RF dimmer, SOP COM V2. Let's have a look what it's got on it. Right, let's start by having a look at the radio board on the back. Now, you might have seen my camera's just gone out of focus then. This phone used to have an amazing autofocus on it, but it seems that Google's messed up the software now, because uh, I've actually set this to manual focus. I've got it in perfect focus, and then when I start recording, it then changes the focus. So there's definitely a bug with that. So thanks very much Google for ruining my camera. Anyway, let's see if we can get it in focus. Right, so on the radio board, lots of discrete components. Um, there is the aerial on the back, which is coiled wire. We've got a trim pot, and then we've got an LM358, which is a generic op-amp. So no intelligence on this board, it's just literally receiving and amplifying the radio signal. The radio signal then goes onto this side. So if we first start over here, you'll see we've got a diode. That's a 7805 voltage regulator, 5 volts obviously. Um, that is powering both this little radio board and then these components here. So let's see what we've got here. We've got a 24CO2, which is a serial EEPROM 2K. Um, and then we've got an unbranded IC, which looking at it as it's connected to the serial EEPROM and it's basically controlling output, it's going to be a, a Chinese AVR clone most likely. Um, you know, I thought they were cheap enough in large quantities that they didn't need to clone them. But it seems that these are unmarked ICs are very common in Chinese products. It must be their own little microcontroller. Anyway, for some reason, it needed this extra EEPROM storage. Um, maybe these cheap microdrives don't have EEPROM, they've only got flash or one-time program memory. I imagine that, that is to store the brightness when it's turned on and off. That's the, probably the only thing it's being used for. So, microcontroller, serial EEPROM, then one of the outputs of the microcontroller. I was going to do a trace out, but it's not really any point, it's so simple. One of the outputs of the microcontroller goes to this, what you would think would be a MOSFET, but it's actually a power transistor, uh, which is rated for up to 55 amps in optimal conditions. So, the 8 amp rating is probably actually realistic. It can probably do that quite easily. I imagine there's probably just about enough uh, connection to the pads, it's got a nice big ground plane on the back as well. Well there's no vias on that though is there? Hmm. 
should be enough to run at 8 amps when it's actually a fairly uh, beefy transistor. Okay, so no idea what's not working. It looks, I mean, the solder on those connectors is pretty dodgy, but the rest of it doesn't look too bad. Um, what might be worth doing is seeing if we can see any signals. Let's try that. So I've got the digital scope on. Um, I've set the range where ground is the bottom, 12 volts at the top. Um, power supply is on. I've just hooked up. Oh, he's definitely hooked up to the ground, isn't it? Let's just check. Okay, so we should see, yep, 12 volt on the top. And then we should see 5 volt if we have a look here. And we don't see 5 volt. No way. Is that what's wrong with it? <laughs> Can't believe it. Um, why are we not seeing 5 volt? Let's look. Oh, sorry, I can't do this very easily with the camera in the way. Right, so we've got 12 volt on the input of that diode. And we've got nothing. <laughs> That's a bad diode. Or, oh. yeah, there's nothing coming out of that diode. Okay, this might be fixable. Hold on a moment. Tested the diode with my meter and it looked okay. So I reflowed the solder on the diode and it still doesn't work. So I'm going to take it off and bridge it. So I've bridged the diode and we're now getting 12 volts going to the regulator, but nothing's coming out of it. So this thing's toast. I'm guessing something has killed both the diode and the regulator. Someone's maybe tested it with too high a voltage or something. God knows what. Um, I might just try sticking 5 volts straight into there and see what happens. So I've got one supply set for 5 volts and one for 12. I've got 12 in the normal place and then I've hooked up this 5 volts directly onto the board. I've got my multimeter connected to the signal output from the radio board. And then if we look on the scope... Let's go. So regular, it's picking up basically all sorts of interference and noise. Um, but if we have a look, and I press the button, you will see when it's transmitting, it's putting a definite pan onto the scope. So it looks like we are picking up the radio signal fine, it's just whether the microcontroller is seeing a valid code or not. The output the microcontroller going to the transistor. I expect to see some sort of PWM pattern if it's working. So if we look on the scope, and we press the on button, and we can see it's on. That's on at maximum brightness by the look of it because it's a solid line. Okay, so let's. Uh, oh, there we go. We are getting. Look at that. Let's hold the down button. Oh, yes. It's a uh, basic PWM dimmer. There you go. So, weirdly, we had a bad diode and a bad 5 volt regulator. If I directly supply 5 volt, this works fine. So, this is fixable. It's on the load. Let's try it with the LEDs. So, that's on uh, the lowest brightness. And we're drawing 28 milliamps. So let's turn it up a few steps. Let's try and get the scope in focus. That's reasonably bright. We're drawing 670 milliamps. And we can go all the way to. Come on. That's what's going on here. It's not making it to the full brightness. Something. Uh, Bit dicky. <laughs> it stopped responding. Oh dear. Yeah, I wonder if it's just picking up interference in here on the bench. Doesn't like it very much, does it? Okay, just uh there we go, right, that's full brightness, 2.1 amps. So if we turn it down, uh, yeah, there's interference in here, I think, from all the test equipment, it only seems to work in very specific places.
Yeah, it's still pretty, it's still pretty bright, but half brightness. Anyway, that's working, so all I need to do to get this to actually work in the box is stick a new 5 volt regulator and a diode on there. Probably don't even need the diode, to be honest, the regulator will do fine. So, that's a success.